pots and pans. What a night. What a last two days for Edmundo Sosa. Nice little pickup. The Phillies were supposed to be bringing in just as a uh, defensive guy. Not so much. How about perfect from the plate in his last two starts, last two games? Rob Thompson, first time around. Oh, your price is out a little bit break. Put Sosa out there and see what happens. He only helps you win the game. <laughs> he only goes, <clears throat> this is his night. By the way, the last two nights, he is now five for his last five in his last two games with two home runs and three runs scored, two doubles uh, in both those games combined, uh, and playing a phenomenal defensive shortstop as well. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Rob Thompson wasn't supposed to start him last night. When I saw that Sosa was in the lineup again last night, I was like, okay, all right, Philly Rob. Let's pump the brakes for a second there. Let's get Bryce and start back in the ball game. Who, By the way, I did the numbers uh, recently. And I was looking at Bryson Stott and seeing how he was doing uh, over the last uh, month or so of the season. And he's only about a uh, 300 hitter. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's kind of hard to take out of the lineup. Over the last month, 322. So that's hard to put on the bench. I understand giving him a day off. Maybe he gets a lefty, giving him a day off. Rob Thompson decided, uh, all right, I'll give him a day off. So this has stepped up to the plate, literally, and did some great things yesterday or two days ago. Rob Thompson then says, you know what? Let's give that a whirl. How do I take him out of the game again? How do I take Sosa out of the game after what he did for us the night before? So he leaves him in the lineup. I see the lineup come up across Twitter, and I go, Sosa again here, Rob. I think it might be pushing it a little bit here. And as I said yesterday on social media, that was a big win. Yesterday, Eddie Sosa, he's a big win for the gut-feeling crowd. And a huge L taken by the analytics crowd. Because there's no analytic in the world that said, hey, Sosa should play back-to-back -back games. He should start back-to-back -back games. Bryson Stott should uh, sit back-to-back uh, -back games. There's no analytic in the world that goes, yeah, that's the way you should do that. There's no number in the world. There's no formula you can put together. Billy Rob just went with the gut. And I loved it. After the press conference last night, or during his press conference last night, he said, uh, yeah, I guess I got some more thinking to do. <laughs> I guess I got to go back to the lab. Got to find a way to keep his bat in the lineup. Does he give Segura a, 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 a night off? He had a home run. He had a walk off. Like, what are you going to do with him? They give Bohm the night. He's still pretty hot. He's still hitting pretty well. 292 on the season overall. Another number I was looking at, 270 in August. 385 in the young month of September. Um, who, who, who gets the day off? Can Sosa catch JT Romuto? Looked like he had a little baby stub toe or something. By the way, that was an insane tag from Sosa. High throw from JT Romuto. Sosa jumps to the sky. If you didn't see it, catches the ball from JT. Reaches well below his butt between his legs. Does a split in the air. It was Ozzie Smith. For all the young kids out there on the old YouTube channel here that don't know Ozzy Smith, go watch Ozzy Smith highlights when the show's over and um, just be dazzled, be amazed by the Wizard of Oz himself. But that's who that play reminded me of. That play was an Ozzy Smith type of play. It was it was acrobatic, is what it was. Sosa goes up, reaches down between the between his legs, tags a runner out. Absolutely incredible. Uh, has another home run last night. Segura got a home run for you. It was just an incredible, incredible night. Really, for the Phillies, they made it made you a little nervous, made you a little nervous in this game. But all in all, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing against the Marlins. And as we said yesterday, you can't take anybody too lightly. As of right now, in September, where every game counts, the Phillies can't look at an opponent and then all of a sudden play down to them because every other team seems to do that. The Mets have done that. The Braves have well, the Braves, not so much, but the Mets have certainly done that. Uh, if they can do it, the Dodgers have certainly done that. And the Phillies have done that. They're riding the ship right now. I've referenced this before, but a few years back, I remember talking to the great Jason Stark, Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame writer up there in Cooperstown. And Jason Stark talked about how the NL East was going to be won by the teams that could beat the Marlins. The Phillies are now finally beating the Marlins. And I think that also is a uh, big, big box to check this season. Beat up on the Marlins, 
and you'll be just fine when it comes to going to the playoffs. Phillies right now, speaking of that playoff picture, this is bonkers. Check this out. Phillies now and the Padres, because the Padres also won. Phillies and Padres solidified there in that second wild card spot, or at least a wild card spot. Both teams now four games up on the Brew Crew, who going into last night's Phillies game, mind you, the Brewers had already lost. So the Phillies knew what they had at stake if they won that baseball game. And sure enough, they did with their 4-3 to win over the Marlins. Uh, again... 